Hi ladies, welcome back to another Wow Moments video. Um, I'm Debbie Patterson and I'm so excited to be sharing with you um, my journey and some encouragement over a cup of tea. So here's your chance, if you don't have a cup of tea to sit and share with me, then just put me on pause and go grab some and come right back. Okay, so once again, let's talk a little bit about the tea. Um, I usually start my day off with a cup of green tea. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Green tea helps to boost your metabolism, and it also has a lot of antioxidants. Both things very good for your body. And remember last time I shared with you that God wants us to take care of our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. So one way that we can take good care of our bodies is by what we put in them. And so I encourage you to um, try use some green tea. It would actually take two or three cups to really get your metabolism boosted on up there. And the older we get, the slower that metabolism is. So enjoy a couple of cups of tea. Uh, you might just want to watch the sugar that's going to be counterproductive to what we're trying to do here. I actually use liquid organic stevia and I love it. Um, no calories, it doesn't change your blood sugar levels and so I highly encourage you to give that a try too. So there you go, some more tidbits to take good care of your bodies. And so let's move on to um, more about the journey that God has me on. And I know that for a lot of you, uh, you can relate to where I am. And so this isn't about me. It's, it is sharing about what God has done in my life and what he is doing and encouraging you on your journey as well. I don't know if you realized it or not, but last time I left you with a little bit of a cliffhanger. Um, I had told you that when my girls were very young, um, God had asked me to stay home full time with them. And I had shared with you the fears that I had over that, the financial fears, and how would our kids ever go to college. And after praying about it, the, the Lord had spoken clearly to me that um, He just wanted me to do what He asked me to do and let Him take care of the college. So let me just tell you how faithful our God is. Fourteen years after that, when our oldest daughter graduated from high school, she received a full-ride scholarship to the uh, college in our town. And then three years after that, when our second daughter graduated from high school, she also received a full-ride scholarship. And then two years after that, when our baby surprise girl um, graduated from high school, she also received enough scholarships that she is going to college for free as well. So maybe you just want to shout and say amen with me that our God is faithful and that when we do step out in faith and we trust and we do what he tells us to do, that he will come through for us. So I pray that that is encouragement for you today. Maybe God's asking you to do something and two and two don't add up and you have no idea how he's going to make that work. Let's remember that we're serving a big God. There is nothing He can't do. With Him, all things are, are possible. So step out in faith and trust Him. On this journey that I'm on that I shared with you last time, God has my life going in a new direction. And he's called me into full-time ministry away from serving and women's things in my church. And uh, he's got me focused completely on um, something new in my hometown and ministry there. Um, that was a big step, letting go of something that I had been involved in for 20 years and stepping completely blinded into something new without really any details at all. So I just want to encourage you that when God's asking you to do something, um, He will also give you the encouragement, the direction, and the confirmation that you need to know that it's Him. I, I woke up on January the 1st, and I had decided to watch a pastor on TV. I do that quite a little bit during the week. Um, I struggle with sleeping at night, so sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'm really tired. And it's hard for me just to jump straight into my Bible study. Um, it's hard to sit down and, and read and soak it in. So maybe for the first 30 minutes, I will turn on a pastor on TV and just let them feed me before I am really awake and alert enough to dig into the Word and, and start eating that myself. So when I turned on the television that morning, 
it was such a God thing. The pastor was um, preaching from 1 Kings um, chapter 18 about Elijah and the widow woman. And what he was saying was just connecting with me and my situation perfectly. And isn't that just God? I mean, his word is as pertinent to our life today as it was thousands of years ago uh, when this story actually was happening. God's alive. God's word is alive and it's active and it is relevant to where we are today. And God certainly proved that to me again that morning. And as this pastor was, pre was preaching, he was talking about how um, there was a drought in the land and God had told Elijah the prophet to go into a town and there would be a widow woman there that was supposed to give him some food. So Elijah went to town and he found this widow and he asked her to go get him something to drink and something to eat. Well, this was a really big issue for this woman because come to find out, she had only enough flour and oil left to make one more meal for her and not only her, but for her son too. And so as mamas, we know that maybe we'd be willing to do without for us, but ask us to give up something, ask us to give up a need for our kiddo, and that is a really hard thing to do. And so Elijah was asking that of her um, to please give him the last bit. And then he said God would take care of the rest. So we might kind of look at this and think, well, that just seems awful selfish that Elijah would want that for himself. But the truth is, Elijah was obeying God because God had a bigger plan here. He was asking the widow woman to give up her final resources. The only thing she had in her hand, he asked her to give it up. Why? Because he was teaching her a lesson in trust. He asked her to open up her hand and give away the very thing that she needed more of. She and her son were going to die without more food. And God asked her to give up the last bit of food that she had. And the amazing part of this story is as this widow woman stepped out in faith to trust God and do what he asked her to do. God chose to provide for her and to prove to her that he was faithful. And you know, that reminds me of my story with the girls um, and con being concerned about how they would get to college. God was asking me to give up my job and that was financial resources. That was the one thing that we really needed in order to ensure that our kids would get to go to college. And you know what? When I opened up my hand and I gave away that resource that I had, God proved to me that He is the resource that I ever need. And not only did I get to see God prove Himself faithful, but I got to spend all of my children's childhood with them. I got to spend their teenage years with them. I got more time invested in my kids than I could have ever asked for, and I could never go back, and I could never ever um, trade that for anything. The memories that we had, the bond that we created, and so not only did God take care of the financial part of it, but He helped to build our family, and He helped to build our relationships with our kids in such an amazing way by obeying what he asked me to do. So I want to encourage you today, um, whatever God's asking you to do, even if it doesn't make sense, step out in faith and follow him. Do what he's telling you to do. It's worth it. I oftentimes kind of laugh and when I think about um, Joshua in the Old Testament. I, I get really um, kind of just think it's so funny when I think about Joshua and all of these men marching around Jericho clanging on things. I mean, that just seems ridiculous. And I'm sure all of these people following Joshua thought, this doesn't seem very warlike. But they did it instead. Instead of doing what they thought was best, they did what God commanded them to do. And we know how that ended up. The walls of Jericho came crashing down and they became victorious. And God has taught me on this path, if I want the walls that are standing 
in my way from my purpose and my destiny to come crashing down, I have to listen and I have to obey and I have to step out in faith. And even when it's stepping out into darkness, I have found that God will illuminate one step at a time and show me where to go. So I just want to leave you with this final verse today. I want to leave you with Psalms 33, 4. For the word of the Lord holds true. Can you say amen? And everything he does is worthy of our trust. Trust him today. It's worth it.